State Cowboys against the top seed in the South, the Duke Blue Devils. Tim Brando and Al McGuire are courtside at Rupp Arena. We will send you there in just a moment. The madness continues. Enjoy the games, everyone, right here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet. Bud Light. Michelin. And by IBM. Welcome to the South Region's second round at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, where today the top-seeded Duke Blue Devils take on the eighth seed, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. In a tournament filled with bracket breakers, this has been a region where the higher seeds have held serve. Along with Al McGuire, I am Tim Brando. We welcome you to our coverage, and clearly, Al, this is a coaching Camelot Mike Krzyzewski going up against Eddie Sutton. Well, all great coaches start with defense. Whoever governs the defensive tempo should win this game. Let me give you a tip from the top. At the 10-minute mark of the first half, if the Cowboys are in there, we got ourselves a game, Tim. Clearly, when you talk of uh, these two teams, Eddie Sutton and Mike Krzyzewski come to mind. Mike Krzyzewski's team, they really had to make a bit of an adjustment once they got Elton Brand back. Elton Brand is a major factor for this team. Rashawn McLeod has clearly been impacted most. Before a jam-packed crowd, the second round of the NCAA tournament here at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, and two of the top-shelf teams in the country defensively to be featured. And as we've mentioned so many times, Al McGuire, when you talk about making adjustments, both of these teams have, and particularly, Al, where the Oklahoma State team is concerned, we're talking about a club that needs to get it done with Adrian Peterson. Well, what they have to do, he gets good numbers up there, mainly when he slashes towards the basket and he's an outstanding rebounder. Rashawn McLeod may be the X factor for Coach K today. What with Elton Brand's loss and now re-emerging after that foot injury, it's McLeod that's affected most. McLeod has been scoring better since Brand came back. What McLeod likes to do is step out the three-point land. He's hitting 42% from there and down low on the blocks, he had many, many moves. Oklahoma State's lineup, Mason had 13 and 13 on Friday the 13th. Robish commands double teams. Peterson the score. Atkins a wing jump shooter Scott Lieb a tough leader for Duke McLeod the first transfer for Coach K Carowell a transition player Brand is a load whether high or low Langdon the Alaskan assassin is in a shooting slump and the extension of the coach is Wojciechowski there you see the officials Jimmy Burr Art McDonald and Tom O'Neill The opening tip, control to McLeod. Trajan Langdon, who went scoreless for the first time ever. Pee Wee League, junior high, high school, or college. He went an offer against Radford in the opening round of the NCAAs, and he had a poor ACC tournament final. So we'll keep a close eye on how well he shoots today. Got lead. And Wojciechowski's defense leads to the turnover. I think they neutralize each other out there. Got lead and Wojo. That's generally what happens when you have two similar styles at point guard. Langdon. Brand the long rebound. Crowd wanted a walk. As Wojo stepped back, so did Eddie Sutton. Already giving Jimmy Burr a little lift. Brand on the low block, commanding the double team. Oklahoma State wants to turn it into a half-court grinder. There's Rashawn McLeod with the first hoop of the afternoon. Looks like they're doubling down on Graham every time he touches the ball in the post. A high pick from Robich gives Gottlieb an opportunity. Robich, long rebound control to Desmond Mason. He can't give Bogus that shot. He likes it about 15 feet out, facing the basket. And you see they run Brand at Robich. He's accustomed to being double teamed. Duke may be one of those few teams that can get away without it. Brand the pick. Here you see the open floor capability. The dump down to Brand. Wojo must take that shot, and that's where Duke struggles. 
Now the, they'll completely lay off Bojo now. Gottlieb won't even get close to him, I believe, until he hits one. Atkins throws up an air ball on the other end. He felt there may have been contact from Trajan Langdon. Langdon might have tickled his elbow a little bit. There you see how they got here. A slower GW team could not keep up with the Cowboys. 26 points off of those colonial turnovers. Very, very important, Tim, that air ball put up by Bojo. It, it changes his whole game around. They could lay off him completely if he scores one. There's the quick double of Brand. Elton said before the game, the biggest problem for this team, Al, since his return, was the lack of spacing. They're having to get accustomed to Elton's presence and size down low. Brad Alexander into the game, and Dave Gottlieb sits down. You gotta remember, Tim, that Duke has never really had in the last 10 or 15 years an outstanding, strong, physical big man in the paint. Just beat a five count there. It's a back door. It's gonna hurt Duke this year. Peterson. This game. Peterson, you mentioned he has to play big, and that time they found him off the high pressure from Wojciechowski. Doug Gottlieb sitting down and Alexander on the floor. Eddie Sutton had his guys going back slow all day. McLeod, again, so effective. And really improving when Brand was hurt. That's why the Duke train kept on running after Elton was gone with that foot injury. Still a medical miracle that he's returned. The answer from deep coming from Adrian Peterson, junior from North Little Rock, Arkansas, Oak Grove High School. I said yesterday, Tim, if you don't hear the name Peterson and Mason, the Cowboys are out of the ball game. Langdon trying to drive baseline. Well, let's see if that gets him going. Now, it's a nice little light rainstorm. He's been a long drought out there in the desert. Excellent shoot. If you watch, he takes a shot exactly the same way each time. Even if he missed 16 in a row, the 17th is put up exactly the same. Alexander with a Jared West impression. Banking one home. A little bit harder than West shot for West Virginia. <laughs> Well, our congratulations to Gail Catlin getting his team to the Sweet 16. This Jerry West and Hot Rod Hunley and Rod Thorne played for the Mountaineers. And it's been Rashawn McLeod, the answer for the Blue Devils offensively. He has six of their eight. Game's a little bit too fast for the Cowboys. Got to slow it down a tick or two. Brand reaching in, fouls Robish. Robush can handle Brand out in the court. Brand is not that quick. Just underway in the South Region second round. A look at our data bank will illustrate the programs that have put it together back to back years. Oklahoma State with Coach Iba, Kentucky, San Francisco, Cincinnati, UCLA, and obviously Duke in the 90s. There's the dump down to Robich. And a player control foul against Big Dave off the double team. Doubling down on Robich here. Gets the ball inside. He lacks that big time strength to finalize and power through. Help comes from the weak side. Chappelle has just checked in, number 20 in white for Duke. Wojciechowski left free, and after bringing his first one from up top, he moves over to the wing to knock down his first three. Gottlieb, and so many times you see a guard, point guard make a play, and then on the other end, the opponent will try to make another play. Uh, guards play with that swagger and ego and Gottlieb uh, every bit as much the competitor as uh, Wojciechowski. There's a nice find to Atkins. Brand clears it to Wojo. Avery to Brand. Beautiful kick off by Avery that time. Pressure up court trying to get the ball out of Gottlieb's hands. Got into Peterson's hands. Got to be more patient against Chappelle. Prior to that timeout, Oklahoma State had gotten eight points off of uh, Duke turnover. So uh, Eddie Sutton's team uh, delivering a little of Coach K's own medicine to tie the game. Now the Blue Devils have come back with five unanswered. And Duke's only gotten two points off turnover. Montanetti has come into the game to replace Mason. 
Mike Krzyzewski, you, you think back only one bad year, and of course it was a bad year on and off the floor for Coach K. He talked to us about it. Being 13 and 18, uh, it was the low point of uh, really my time at Duke, except for my first couple of years. And a lot has, to, has had to be done in this short period of time and for us to be have won 30 games in the regular season championship and have a chance to advance it, it means more than in some of the other NCAA tournaments that we've been in perspective and passion but over the years compassion I think uh, illustrate what Mike Krzyzewski's uh, meant to the Duke prog program you know you hear worried about going to pro ball and retiring and so forth I think he's so happy, and his family's so happy that he's a lifer. Yeah. Another steal by the Devils. That's their fifth. Brand doubled, bailed out by McLeod there. Wojciechowski on the wing. Too strong. Long rebound. He and Gottlieb on the deck. We'll expect a lot of that today. And those two get with it in the backcourt. Peterson. Long rebound. Collected by Oklahoma State. Fresh clock. Atkins. At the 10 minute mark, we told you earlier, three point spread. That just what? Coach 81. 10 minutes deep into the game, and there they are, very much within striking distance. But I said earlier, looks like a timeout to timeout game that Eddie Sutton's playing. So he's playing in five minute sections, about six minute sections. Atkins rattles one home. 22 to 20. The fans from Stillwater enjoying the Commonwealth. Almost 11 minutes deep. Three for seven from deep for the Cowboys. These are tight rooms at Rupp Arena. If you're going to uh, hit a feathery J, there's very little margin for error with your jumper. Gottlieb. I think that little fray between he and Wojciechowski got his ladder up. Doug Gottlieb has to shoot the ball more. He doesn't prefer to shoot the ball. He's looking for assist all the time. And the reach in foul. Robish with a cheapie. That'll be his second. Why the doubling down on Brand down? Here's a scramble early between the son of a of a dock worker and the son of a basketball coach. <laughs> they play to win. Yeah, you know, Oklahoma <laughs> State's got a pretty good wrestling team. That that may have counted for a point uh, in Stillwater when they play at uh, the Iba Arena there. Gallagher and I Iba Hall there. It was Gottlieb that time in the replay down Main Street. Give and go with Carwell. Jimmy Burr spots the foul against Mason. A little bit too much hands in the holding. It's only three personal fouls on the Cowboys and four on the Dukie. Nice fake. Great finish. Yes, it was. Well, Sean now with double digits, Al. He has ten. Five for six from the floor. Alex Weber, number 45 in the black and orange of Oklahoma State. On he the floor for the first time. He must give him quality minutes. He must give about five minutes of quality. Tom Canati cannot hit. The cloud clears. Carowell off a pick from Burgess. Nice elevation on that shot. Weber has to give. Solid minutes here, so they got to rest Robush at least twice a half. Nice back door by Gutley, and a tremendous pass from Atkins. That's the Achilles heel of, of Duke, it's the back door, they overplay the passing lane. Parallel, so athletic it can go over the back and claim that rebound against a player like Mason. And Mason put a nice body on him. It didn't help. Well, he will get long rebounds here on the offensive end. And beautiful hand. He's going to kick it back. I told you he'd kick it back. Big goal. 
The fans almost into it as much as Coach McGuire. You see Gottlieb hit the deck, a la Wojo. Carwell. Loose ball, Cowboys getting all of them. Numbers are there again, kick it back, take it yourself, up you go. Could be timeout coming. Saddle up, the Cowboys expecting to hang around. His pass it back and forth. They give indecision to the defensive man. There's the last pass back. Automatic. Cutie. A dipper. His reaction saying, hey, in your face, we can get it done. Joe, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Joe Atkins out of Oklahoma City, a homespun star, giving a Sunday best dish in the first Sunday of the NCAAs for Eddie Sutton. In a game of runs, before a packed house in a basketball mecca, Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm about the only guy around that's ever coached against the man in the brown suit, Adolph Rupp. He was a great, great coach. Get your numbers. We can give you the right time the day of the game. <laughs> <laughs> After he beats you, buy your bourbon. <laughs> but a great coach. He started this dream here in Kentucky. A little stoppage of uh, a play coming out of the timeout. Jim Burr with an explanation for both coaches. Generally, it has to do with where the ball will be inbounded. Or it's a shot clock. That, that, it's generally one of those two things. The shot clock shows 34 after the timeout. Sometimes it's where you trigger the ball inbounds that's of debate. I thought it was a key timeout by Coach Mike. Um, Oklahoma State was starting to make a move, and that just now uh, stops them, stops their momentum. Got to re regroup it again to get going. I'm surprised they're not taking Gottlieb out of Mojo out of there. Well, whatever the problem was, they ironed it out. Six and a half remaining. Tim Brando, Al McGuire, Craig James, Lexington, Kentucky. Got to set some shots for Langdon. There it is. Carowell found the baseline and with reversal. Now we're, we're told one of the officials was having a bit of a problem with a hamstring, so there may have been some consideration to going to the alternate official. Gottlieb misses the runner. Thought he got hit in that play. Five fifty-one remaining, and we're all tied. Upcoming games today in the second round: Western Michigan, Stanford. How about Valparaiso? Uh, Homer Drew's son, Bryce, who got it done, taking on Florida State, St. Louis, Kentucky, Syracuse, New Mexico. That'll be our game. UCA. UCLA and Michigan, a, a feature game later in the afternoon in Atlanta. It will be fun to watch. 10-0 run for the Blue Devils. Teed by that six-point sequence when Langdon nailed a tray after a, an offensive rebound of a missed free throw. Roll base. Three underneath for all the while. Uh, he's so upset with himself that he didn't finish while being fouled. Showed him a new defensive set that time by Duke, the 2 2 1 pressure zone. I'm sure you remember Dave um, Robichaux. Yep. Played at Kansas in a tremendous pro career. The Lakers, the Nuggets, the Pacers, the Cavaliers. Began his career in the ABA with Kansas City. He also has a younger brother on this team that doesn't play much now. Yes. Scott Robich. They broke a bone in his left thigh and has uh, been trying to recover from that. Gottlieb will come in momentarily for the Cowboys. They need him on the floor. I thought they might have kept him out a little bit too long this time. The Cowboys, Gottlieb, catch it for Joe Atkins. One of the problems he has to face, not only 
Wojciechowski, who matches up favorably with him. He's a bit shorter, but also Avery, a different style of point guard that he must check when William Avery is on the floor. He's got an asset because the Avery will not post up. Battier oh. facing the hoop and knocking down the deuce. Well, the weapons in the uh, Duke artillery being felt in the first half by the Cowboys. Just got it over with a second to spare. Peterson trying to get it done off the dribble. And again, player control foul. Battier taking the charge. Fred James. Tim, you guys are talking about Doug Gottlieb. I spoke with him before the ball game. He said he has faced pressure before. Teron Liu from Nebraska, great point guard, a lot of pressure on him. He feels extremely confident he can handle this game. He says Wojo and these guys are going to try to step on his feet and elbow him. They're expecting a physical game, but Gottlieb said, I expect to dish a lot back to them, too. Well, the Notre Dame transfer trying to hold up under that pressure. Looking for and finding Desmond Mason. And Mason can't hit. Out of bounds to the Devils. Well, he got the wide open jumper there with the length of the floor pass. Right now, this game was decided on that six point play down the court at time so far. And um, but Eddie Sutton has called a timeout, stopped the bleed, and put a band aid on it. Now their offense got to get moving again to stay in this ball game. Duke is trying to knock them out in the first half. The cloud. Robish cleared. Nice box out by Robish. Something to remember. So many of these timeouts taken. Uh, the band-aids, as you suggested, or gauze bandage, uh, could play a role late in the game if it's close. A reach in foul against William Avery. Uh, sometimes you have to take those timeouts to stop those Duke runs that can come in 12 and 14 point waves. Well, Mason, what he does, he muscles himself for nice inside position for rebounding or for scoring. He is their best athlete. Athletically, this kid could play at Duke. Well, that's tall company that's indeed. A yes, indeed it is. Very accomplished artist, Desmond Mason. You hear the crowd responding with both cheers and boos for Wojciechowski. I don't know if that's a bulldog. They're making it sound like a bulldog. <laughs> they call him a bulldog. Mason had 14 rebounds against George Washington two days ago. And he's only 6'6", six, six, or 6'5". Six, 38-32. Blue Devils by six. Langdon off the dribble. McLeod. No one blocked him out. He has a dozen. He's got to know where McLeod is at all times. Very rare that Wojciechowski would go up against a guard, Al, that's uh, lower than he is on the floor. Gottlieb is one of those. Point guards always tell me that it's tougher to check guys that are smaller than they are. And you see Oklahoma State hitting a 0 for 4 drought in the last four and a half. Mason, reach in foul against Wojciechowski. A nice touch. Tries to tip there with just a simple piece of cake. Was that Langdon? I'm sorry, I might have missed that. McLeod. McLeod, that was. I thought it was McLeod. It was Langdon that missed the shot and McLeod that followed. Uh, Roshan McLeod, certainly an example of why you make adjustments as a coach for such a long period of time. Coach K would, would not take on a transfer. First one ever out of St. John's, the Red Storm. They lost Heartbreak Hotel to Detroit by a point in an earlier round. Langdon. Oh, beautiful, beautiful form. Eight in the game for Langdon, a 10-point Duke lead. Good guards don't pick up their dribble. That's how long keeps his dribble alive. Nice cut to Atkins. Boy, Gottlieb, give him a little room, and he will find a seam. He smoked that pass in there. 
Langdon again. There was a push prior to the shot. McLeod with an elbow. It's one and one. Going to go down and shoot. That is the eighth team foul against the Devils. And uh, very important for the Cowboys to carve into this double-digit lead moments ago in the remaining 115. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Dean Smith. We'll get you up to date on all of the tournament news, the bracket breaking that's been going on in this NCAA tournament on Pennzoil at the half. Brand returns and McLeod sits down. Joe Atkins here is, um, he has to get at least 10 or 12 points for the Cowboys to win. He was nervous before the game. I think now he gets the butterflies out of his stomach. He has 10 on the day, but comes up dry there. Langdon a walk. Give Gottlieb credit for that. Left his man, got his backwards so far defensive position. Watch, he steps in. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is a coach's son play. Here he is, keeping his dribble alive. Brand picks up a foul. Really interesting what's happening here. Behind us, the Kentucky contingent, folks from the Commonwealth, booing Wojciechowski every time he touches the ball. Then Mickey Shusevsky on the other side for the Blue Devils leads the entire Duke. And, you know, there you see Mickey and her children with her. She becomes the cheerleader that actually choreographs the Duke fans to stand up and cheer when Wojo's being booed from the other side. You can't boo Wojo. Wojo gives you all heart, all desire. He's part of himself on the floor every game. Rojo's my type of ball player. If I was coaching today, that's the type of guy I recruit, even though he's out of ball in there. With the white <laughs> soups and the crab sandwiches. <laughs> Longshoreman. I was a longshoreman. He's empty those banana boats a thousand years ago. Listen to this. The booze start and then the cheers come from the other side. Rojo, nice dump down to McLeod. Oh, you can't keep him on the bench that long. And by the way, coming up at halftime, among the items that Special K and Dean Smith and Brett Gumbel will look at, the, that miraculous uh, basketball version of the hook and lateral that Bryce Drew was able to knock down against Ole Miss to advance Valparaiso into the second round. They'll go for one shot now. Look for it about five, six seconds. They miss it. It's time for a rebound, and that's all she wrote. Again, the curl, McLeod, this time doubled, and he walked. turned it over. He walked. You see the help side defense that Eddie Sutton preaches leading yep. to that turnover. Where well, Oklahoma made a mistake that time. They had a foul to give. I would have given the foul just to eat up the clock. They get the turnover instead. Chappelle comes in for Rashawn. Got to move quite quickly here. Can't pass the ball at all. You got to go all the way, Atkins. Go all the way. There you go, son. Duke gets that six-point play. That, in essence, is the difference. They lead it 45 to 38. That's the end of the first half. Devils leading it. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's NCAA basketball championship will continue after this. Gottlieb doesn't keep his body between himself and the ball. Rojo reaches all, gets it. Now he leads it towards the basket. His Cali Wade coming down. Should have hit Langdon on the side. He was a little bit upset. You see that arm movement. Very rarely you see a Duke player show any facial or physical moves when they're disappointed with their teammate. Out of the timeout and a little conversation with his coach. Carrawell back on the floor as Peterson makes his move and it's a block against Langdon. First on Trajan and the first team foul of the half against the Blue Devils. Well, the Cowboys 
Getting a bit of a break on Duke turnovers here, particularly on that breakaway when Carwell took the steps, opening the door for the Cowboys. He didn't take advantage of this in that one. Would have been 11-point spread. If he makes this one, it knocks it down to uh, eight. Now, yesterday, we witnessed an underdog that uh, in every facet of the game played hard, played well, but could not finish either at the line or shoot well from the floor. That's what cost North Carolina Charlotte against North Carolina. Today, the Cowboys have to hit on all cylinders. McLeod and uh, Mason, you heard Eddie Sutton say earlier in his interview with uh, Craig James, He's getting it too easily. That time was another example. That, uh, by the way, hits to the weak side. That's the third foul against Desmond Mason. St. Anthony's High School in Jersey City. And uh, you talk about uh, the energy and the in intensity of Wojciechowski as he takes a seat and Avery returns. Well, Sean McLeod, perhaps uh, one of the most uh, intense on the floor. And uh, the numbers today, outstanding. He's steady and he's consistent. Of the freshmen, Shane Battier is the best passer, in my opinion. He fans the ball to the weak side with no problem. And they extend the defense with Gottlieb out of the game and Chad Alexander in. Duke comes out to extend. Robish would have counted had it gone. That is a, a matchup they can take advantage of when McLeod is forced to check Robish without a double team. And that's the third against Roshan, so mark that down. Just over five minutes deep in the second half and the most effective offensive force for the Devils hit with uh, his third foul. Um, McLeod will come out. They won't let him play with that many fouls, at least to get his head into the game. Not, uh, not bad, though, when you can go to Brand. <laughs> There's an equalizer. Not as, uh, not as mobile as McLeod, but uh, more physical. I don't know that I've ever seen Al as a freshman, a player as thick that has an all-floor game like an Elton Brand. Well, Elton Brand, what he does, he runs the court like a number three, like a forward. There's a steal. Brand larceny from Atkins. Good decision that time by Avery. Could have created a three-point play if he went to try to block that shot. Good numbers. Nice bounce pass. Oh, acrobatic. Wow. Everything but a finish. Here come the Cowboys. Peterson waits for some help. Heady decision. The numbers weren't right on that break. Well, this uh, with Gottlieb off the floor, if the Cowboys can carve into this lead, very important. Duke has turned it over 14 times today. Peterson off the pick. Ooh, quarter, maybe. Wave it off. They're calling a moving pick on Robish. Eddie Sutton has come to midcourt. He can't believe it. That's a tee. Oh, a quick tee on Eddie. Oh, the six-point play in the first half. Now, this could possibly be three and two and one. It could be a seven-point play. We should point out that the call was made by Jim Copenhaver, the alternate who was forced to come in when Tom O'Neill pulled his hamstring. And Eddie Sutton cannot believe that a moving screen was called. And that is the third foul on Robish. And that is a double whammy. I don't think the call was that bad. He did move on the pick. There it is moving. But the thing that taught Frank Hotel for everybody is that he made the three-point shot. Uh, and then Eddie Sutton picked up a technical foul. And it's automatic when you come out of the coaching box. And as I mentioned, Eddie had come all the way to midcourt. So he knew he earned the team. 
If Duke scores here, it could make it a long campfire for the Cowboys. McLeod. Well, we'll see if this uh, energizes the Cowboys and the fans that have uh, gotten behind them here at Rupp Arena. Atkins turned it over. Brand saves it, but Peterson regathers. A leaner. Now, this is exactly the kind of play Duke wants. Avery. 61-52. Got to get Gottlieb back in the ball game to settle this team down now. That was a two-point game to a seven-point game. Two sequences in both halves. The one we just witnessed and the one when the game was tied at 28. The six-point sequence. Another near steal. Alexander from the corner. Pulled down by Chappelle. Brand. Oklahoma State's defense always a factor, though they have given up a lot of points today. They have forced a number of turnovers, uncharacteristic of Mike Krzyzewski's coach team. They're double down on Brand who gets the ball in the low post. Here it goes into the low post. Where's the double? Double, there it comes. That one was deflected by Peterson. Well, Mike Krzyzewski very rarely sees his team turn it over that many times. Atkins! 15 for Joe Atkins, playing the strings like Chet Atkins. Whoa! Brand. Nice block by Mason. All four. It's not there, Alexander. Got to take it around the horn. There it is. Well, they've responded to the technical. Down six with the ball. The Duke keeps the pressure on. Constant. Avery, the long rebound. Now, well, with Gottlieb off the floor, they are looking for Atkins. And Peterson each time down. And there's the reach-in foul. Very obvious. That is a 16 foul. From now on, it's one and one. Duke goes to the line. Every time you kick the ball down low, they double team on Brand. The percussion section in all ages, we might add, for Duke. That's Dr. Clyde Young tooting his own horn about his Duke Blue Devils as you see our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Oklahoma State getting double Duke points off turnovers, and that is very rare. It's kept them in this game. Carowell leaning in on Peterson, and Adrian will pick up the foul. They go for one and one. Duke has only committed three personal fouls in the second half here, so they got three to give. Duke's turnover margin this year, plus eight. That was best in the Atlantic Coast Conference by far. This year, Eddie Sutton's turned the tables. Uh, today, the, Eddie's turned the tables on that stat of the year for the Devils. 16 turnovers committed by Duke. And when you're shooting that well, and uh, Duke had to shoot that well to maintain a lead because they've turned it over so often. This Daniel buries his second. He creates his own shot off the dribble. Gottlieb, Robish, Montanati, Peterson, and Joe Atkins on the floor for the Cowboys. Langdon, Wojciechowski, Batier, Brand, and Carowell for Duke. Peterson off the pick. Caught in no man's land on the baseline. Was really looking for Robish. Had to throw up a prayer. I don't think the Cowboys can keep Mason out too much longer. They need more scoring power out there. Trying to get the ball down to Brand if they possibly can here. Clock down to 10. Gottlieb working on Wojo. Goes through the pick. Batier, nice cut by Langdon. Too strong, he rushed the shot. That's Eddie Sutton's defense. Normally, that's automatic. 
Good decision not to shoot. Robles. Oh, I thought that was a beautiful block that time. Jimmy Burr got some body with Brand. Although the block was effective, he got him with that large, wide body. Yeah. Got him down below, but up the top, all leather. A little bit too much body. Here's another angle of the same play. Watch down low here. Robles at the line. His body lean on him. Robish doesn't have that physical strength to handle a kid like Brand. We had made them all prior to that miss. Six of seven now. Eddie Sutton does have the luxury to give Brett a rest here. Like they'd rest him up for the last four minutes of the game. Uh, it has been an uphill climb all day, but one of the reasons those two sequences, one in each half, a six-point play off a three-pointer and a foul, then a missed shot and another three by Langdon, and then a technical off a moving pick that could have been points for Oklahoma State turned into a five-point swing for Duke. The clouds back in with four personal fouls. <laughs> This is where Eddie Sutton's at his best. A sticky half-court defense, forcing Duke to utilize a lot of the clock. Langdon a pull-up. McLeod keeps it alive. Rojo. I don't think Rojo should have taken the shot that quickly that time with a fresh clock. Wojciechowski one for five from the floor today. Building will explode if Oklahoma State scores here. Nice kick out to the corner to Peterson. Yes! Patterson. Peterson, excuse me. On the deck. comes back in coach mcguire calling for him a moment ago and he trots onto the floor as peterson leaves peterson will not be out for a minute if he's out for a minute that'll be a long time he has to get back in the game johnny ride a pony here ring olivia we used to play in the bronx in new york everybody jump on everybody <laughs> they're piling on they've outscored duke nine to one in the last 508 mason has to show his offensive skills Eddie Sutton, not at all happy that Gottlieb took that time out. He'd like to have as many as possible down the stretch. The Duke lead is three. <laughs> from Lexington, McLeod the story for Duke, but they've only scored one point since he picked up his fourth foul. The points off turnovers, a catalyst for Oklahoma State. Interesting that Gottlieb would call that time out we were in a TV timeout zone at the four-minute mark. There would have been an automatic timeout. Now, Eddie Sutton, without any timeouts remaining for the remainder of this game, he was very upset with his guard when he called it. 29 seconds ahead of the automatic timeout. Peterson throws up a brick. They made a mistake that time. Got to get the ball to Mason. Well, McLeod's covering with the three, with the four foul. Whoever McLeod is covering, the Cowboys got to get the ball into that man's hands offensively. McLeod is covering now again Mason. You gotta get the ball to Mason. You get McLeod out of there, you got an edge. There you see the turnover story. That's kept the Cowboys in it. Now they'll have to play the distance with only an automatic timeout after the four-minute mark. They will have no team timeouts, either 20s or fulls, the rest of the way. McLeod. Well, that was a hot. That was a clear walk prior to the shot. It went uncalled. Got away with a little tiny step. It wasn't a big one. Cleaner and the foul against Langdon. Uh, now take a look at this uh, reception of the pass and the bunny hop. On the left side, his indecision, he doesn't know whether to take the shot up, puts the ball down, 
And close. May I, that's a close call. I, I didn't see that one dribble. Uh, down the hop it. came on the reception. Prior to the dribble. <laughs> and uh, obviously that was part of the argument from Eddie Sutton. I, I think the Cowboys have oh, taken Mason back out. I don't know why they didn't go to Mason. Whoever, whoever the guy's covering, whoever McLeod's covering, you got to get the ball to that man. Sixty-nine, sixty-six. Lifetime left. Three minutes and change. Landon O'Leaner. Well, the Alaskan assassin is back. 15 for him today. He had two subpar performances in the ACC final against North Carolina. And then for the first time in his life, at any level in organized basketball, no points against Radford in the opening round. Robich. Nice back door. Peterson, too strong. Montanati lost it. Now the Devils trying to close the door on the Cowboys. Spread it out a little bit, try to kick it into McLeod. And he cannot get to his teammate uh, to his team because there's no timeouts left. It should all end up with McLeod with the ball at the very end, about seven seconds to go. Shot clock winding down. Carowell. All the long rebounds are dropped. Back to Duke. Brand has 10. You've got two seconds to get it over. They just got it over. Adkins was waiting on Peterson, who had to adjust his shoe. Adkins. Oh, the iron on time to Oklahoma State. Peterson with a fresh block to Robich. Oh, Rattles went home. He touched all of the iron. Big Dave, his dad, looks on with high anxiety. Two-shot possession game. The milk the clock down to under double digits. Top seed trying to advance. Duke knocked out by a 10-seed Providence a year ago, a team that would push Arizona. He's right on. It could be a five-count here, Tim. Langdon gives it up to Wojo. McLeod. Way too strong. Nice rebound by Atkins. And the foul on Brand is his fourth. And that's the sixth on Duke. So from now on, it's one and one. For Duke, number 31. So McLeod with four, Brand with four. Hold on to that thought if we uh, are forced to play an extra session. We have a 20 second timeout, Duke. 20-second timeout taken by the Devils. Well, one of the reasons uh, everyone in Kentucky is upset with Mike Krzyzewski perhaps may be what happened back in 1992, if you recall. The pass in situations like this the Rick Pitino will never forgive himself for not guarding the inbounds pass. Grant Hill with a baseball pass to Leitner, and Christian knocked it down. By guarding the inbound pass, you got to throw the ball high and allows your defensive men to get around wherever the ball be ends up. Well, Rick Pitino also told me, Al, that he was upset with himself as a coach because the last thing he said to his players, don't foul. And John Pelfrey, he didn't feel, guarded him as well as he might have had not Rick made that statement to him. Well, you see the possession arrow to do? Yes. Two possession game here. Cowboys got to come up with something here. They got to try to look for Peterson to drive. Maybe pick up a foul. Mason back on the floor. That's a walk. And Eddie Sutton still upset with Copenhaver. Two calls that the alternate official has made today. Clearly the moving pick was accurate against Robish, but it came at such a key time. Well, they got a call. They got a foul now. You got to get up. Got a foul. I wouldn't foul Langdon, but I'd foul anybody else. You got a foul. There's the reach. Trajan, such an outstanding free-throw shooter, though he missed two last night. 
Adkins picks up the foul in second. Trajan was 0 for 2 last night at the line, a 90% free throw shooter on the year. Alexander checks in. Gottlieb sits. The reason they haven't Gottlieb sit here, they need three point shots, and Gottlieb can't hit from out. And he's also a liability at the free throw line. Should uh, you know he shoot 52 percent to 53 percent, mm -hmm. which is rare for a guard. Usually they can bury them, especially the son of a coach. Still a two possession game. Uh, this would make it a three possession game if Langdon knocks it down. Duke's all-time free throw leader, Trajan Langdon, giving them a three-possession game, 75-68. The bomb by Peterson. Oh, he almost used the window again. Robish was on the line. It belongs to the Devils. Time may be running out on the Cowboys. But for Duke, the program that last year is a two-seed, Knocked out by Providence at 10. They got the front court to go with the back court this year and apparently preparing to punch their ticket to the Sweet 16. Carowell is a 65% shooter at the free throw line. He's among those you'd like to foul rather than Langdon. It is uh, all she wrote. It's time for the Cowboys to saddle up and ride into the sunset. Had a great year. Outstanding year, especially at the end with a thin bench. Eddie Sutton, the old war horse, is, uh, showed some great coaching moves today, but there was just too much Duke and too much Mike Krzyzewski. And remember those two sequences, Al. Six-point play in the first half, the technical on the moving pick, a five-point swing in the second. Joe Atkins hits a three. The five-point game, no timeouts remaining. Uh, obviously, Coach Sutton could have utilized one right after that three-point shot rather than having to give up the foul. But uh, we should not be critical of those early timeouts because the Cowboys were trying to stop Duke runs. You've got to stop Duke runs. You've got to, even if you use up all your timeouts in the first half, what's good is having timeouts at the end of the game if you're down 25 points. Eddie Sutton's a pro at using his timeouts. He used timeouts to stop momentum. Duke can beat you so many ways. But the key to Duke is McLeod. So somewhere along the line here, the four freshmen will tighten up. It's going to be up to the big brothers to take care of the thing. A couple of Hall of Famers on the sidelines today, future Hall of Famers, Sutton and Krzyzewski. Adkins, Mason the follow. And a quick foul with 3.3 remaining. Well, give Oklahoma State credit. The big guns from... The Big 12 perhaps overshadowed by Kansas and their yellow brick road run, but they certainly handled Duke's pressure today, hung around all day. Did an excellent job again. What they, what they do, they're defensive oriented. What surprised me a couple of times on rebounds, the Cowboys really went with fast break and outran Duke. But Duke's an excellent, excellent ball club. I don't see any weakness. The only weakness would be backdoor with overplaying defensively. Elton Brand had to play in foul difficulty, and as he mentioned to us, uh, we're still making adjustments to my return. I'm happy to be back, but my teammates are having to understand where I am on the floor. And there you can see uh, Alexander, even in defeat, understanding how hard and how well this Cowboys team plays. If you're going to beat Duke, you've got to have a long bench. That's a must. You've got to back at least eight, nine men. The Blue Devils move on to the Sweet 16. They're headed to St. Petersburg. Eddie Sutton congratulates Mike Krzyzewski. Roshan McLeod was the star of this game. Our final score, 79 to 73. A 
we check the brackets in the south region. Again, the higher seeds continue to hold serve. Duke will await the winner of Syracuse and New Mexico to follow. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Roshan McLeod with 22 and Brett Robish with 19. For Al McGuire and Fred James, Tim Brando, so long from Lexington, Kentucky. Coming up in just a moment, back to Special K, Dean Smith and Greg Gumbel in our New York studio.